Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about interesting formatting tricks in Power BI. Now, these tricks are not very analytical in nature, but they will help you maintain a good hygiene of your Power BI model. And I have divided these tricks into three main buckets. We're going to talk about the formatting of the visuals. We're going to talk about formatting of your DAX, and we're also going to talk about formatting of your data model. Let's just get started. All right, let's just start with some interesting formatting tricks. The first one has got to do with alignment. So most times people, when they're trying to align different objects, charts or cards or anything on the canvas of Power BI, they would drag the objects with the use of the mouse. And it just is a lot of hassle to use the mouse while just trying to align something. Now take a look at these four cards here. Maybe I'd like to align them perfectly to the left and also make the distance between the four cards as the same. So what do I do? Instead of manually dragging every single card across the screen, I can just select all the four cards. That's for one. And then I'll go to the format tab right here, which appears. And then in that I have something called as an align dropdown. In the align dropdown, I have these lot of options that I can pick from. To begin with, I'm just going to pick, hey, why don't you align all of these to the left? And they all get aligned to the left. And then I can say, hey, in the format tab, align and then distribute vertically. Distribute vertically simply means that to make the vertical distance between the four boxes the same. That's what I can do. And the distance between these four boxes is the same. It's a very, very important trick, especially when you're trying to create good reports that look good and are looking in order. Vertical distance and horizontal distance uh, of different objects should be the same in order to make them look perfectly. Uh, just as the way that I have vertically aligned them and distributed them vertically, you can also do a horizontal distribution. So let's just say that these four cards were not vertical, they were horizontal. So what do I do? I keep this card right here. I select all the four cards on my screen. So, and then I just go over to the format tab. I'm just going to say, hey, align them to the top so that all of four of them come on the top. Now one card is overlapping the other, but I just want the horizontal distance between the cards should be the same. So I go to the align tab and I say distribute them horizontally and all of the four cards are perfectly distributed horizontally across my screen. So that was an interesting trick about alignment. Instead of manually dragging different objects on the screen, you can use these align options to perfectly align your objects on the screen. All right, let's just proceed with trick number two, which is lock objects. So let's just say that you have designed your dashboard, everything is complete and it's finally ticked and tied. After you complete the entire dashboard in Power BI, what you would certainly want to do is lock the objects. It's going to prevent the user from accidentally moving any parts of the dashboard and maybe just messing up the entire dashboard. So what do you do is you go to the view tab in the view tab, you have this option called lock objects. And if you lock all the objects, it's going to ensure that everything on the dashboard is selectable. You can click on anything. Maybe I can click on the black color or the red color and everything gets filtered. But if I try to move something, I would not be able to change the position of anything. So if I just try to move that chart, I would not be able to do that. If I try to move that card, I would not be able to do that. This is going to ensure that nothing gets moved accidentally while your user is interacting with the dashboard. All right, the next one is the Alt key trick. Now let's just say that I'm trying to move different objects, maybe some cards on the screen. And while I move it, you can see that it kind of snaps to different objects. So I have a lock object selected here. I'm just going to unlock that first. And then if I just try to move that object off the screen, you can see that it automatically tries to snap to different objects that it finds in alignment with. So you can see that it's just trying to snap it to other objects. Sometimes I want that. That's actually good. It helps me align different objects together with the use of the mouse. But what if I want to have a more free move movement and I don't want the object to snap and align itself to other objects. What do I do? I just hold the alt key on my keyboard and then I start to move that object. You will find that the object stops to snap with any other objects that you're trying to move it across and you have a more freestyle movement as you would have it otherwise without holding the alt key. So use that in case you want to have more free movement. You can use the alt key and start dragging that object. All right, trick number four. Let's just say that you're trying to create a title and you would want the title to appear in a rectangle. The first thing that you end up doing is going to the insert tab and everybody knows it that in the shapes you can add like a rectangular shape on your canvas. So I'm just going to create a rectangle here and I'm just going to expand that rectangle to go to the right of the canvas right here. Now you can see that if I just stretch my rectangle, I do not really have the rectangle touching the boundaries of my canvas right here. It kind of stops midway and it kind of leaves a little space on the right here and a little space on the left here. Maybe I just want the rectangle to have full scape of the canvas and touch the boundaries of the canvas. How do I actually do that? The trick is not to use the rectangle as a shape, to use a text box and treat it like a rectangle. How do I do that? I'm just going to delete that. And in the insert tab, I have something called as a text box. I'm just going to insert an empty text box, put that on the left hand side here and then expand it to the right hand side like that. Now, this is still a text box, but if I fill color inside of this text box, it's going to look nothing short of a rectangle. So I click on the text box. I go to the visualization pane 
in the background color maybe i just fill it up with some or the other color maybe a little yellow color and this looks like a rectangle now it also touches to the borders of your canvas and you can treat that as a little title bar and you can write any title of your report or your dashboard and it just touches the boundaries perfectly all right let's just move on with some dax formatting tricks the first trick that i have for you is that how do you create a measures table that contains all your measures so that you can see them at one single place you can see that on the right hand side along with the data tables that i have i also have a measures table which is where i have stored all the measures that i have calculated in my data model how do i make such a table now there are two ways to make a table the first way is that you can use dax and dax formulas to make a table that's one of the ways the second way is that you can use the enter data option in power bi to be able to create a blank table and store all your measures in there now i generally use the enter data option because with that i have this little feature that all my tables are marked as a little calculator and it kind of shows me a visual indication that this is nothing but a measures table and it pops up right up on the top right now how do i do that i go to the home tab in the home tab i have this enter data option and i'm just going to click on the enter data option maybe i want to create a new table which is where i want to show all my budget calculations so i'm just going to name this table as maybe budget measures and i'm just going to have column one here i'm not going to change that i'm just going to click on load and that empty table with just column one with no value is just going to get loaded into my power bi all right once you have that table with column one which has got no data i'm just going to create my first measure i'm just going to create a blank measure nothing too fancy so right click and i'm just going to make a measure and i'm just going to make a blank measure right here press enter and that measure is stored now once you have at least one single measure in that particular table you are free to delete column one so i can just right click on the column one and i can just choose to delete that and column one is actually gone now you can take a look that the budgets table is slightly different in terms of icon than my measures table although both the tables contain only the measures and there is no data in the table but the icons are still different now as soon as you collapse the field list and open it once again the icon is just going to turn to the same icon as you had it for the measures table and all your measures table the nice thing about that is they get stacked up right on the top and you can take a look at all the measures all the calculations at one single place all right another important formatting need is the ability to be able to format your calculations so that they look in a certain way when you present them on the screen take a look at total orders unique customers and unique selling days maybe i'd like to present them with a comma separator when i'm showing them as a card on my screen the way you would manually do that is by selecting every single calculation so let's just say that i select total orders as a calculation i go to the measure tools right here and i apply a comma here and hence i would have to do that for every single card or every single calculation that appears on on the screen now one way to be able to automate that is by using tabular editor but then you'll have to write a c sharp script for that to be able to run a loop and loop through all the calculations and make them as a comma separated format one of the easiest way to do that is that you hop over to the data model right here in the data model since all the calculations are kept in the measures table i'm just actually going to pick up the total orders i'm just going to pick up the unique customers and unique selling days by holding the control key once i have done that i actually go to the properties here and in the properties i'm just going to say that hey i'd like to apply a custom format and in the custom format i'm just going to say hey i'd like to maybe you know kind of apply a little comma here so i'm just going to write uh, hash comma hash hash press enter and i'm just trying to apply a comma separated format for all these three calculations i can do for bulk calculations right in my data model view and if i go back and take a look at my visualizations you will see that for all these three calculations i just applied comma separators to all the three calculations in just one shot all right another very important tip is to format your dax you certainly want your dax to be readable and to be understandable and then you can make use of that so if you already don't know how do you format the dax as and when you write it you can make use of an external tool called daxformatter.com now in this tool you can just open the website daxformatter.com and just come back to this formula bar right here and just paste your dax formula that you'd like to format control v and then click on format it's going to nicely format that dax and you can then just copy that particular dax statement and then paste that back into your power bi if you would like to learn how do you want to format the dax where do you want to put the indentation where do you want to make sure that you commit that formula in the next line and things like that i have done another video which is where i talk about different rules to be able to format the dax and as in when you write it but if you're the one who would like to take help from external tools to format your dax this is absolutely a brilliant trick to format your dax
All right, so the final one. Next up are a few tricks to be able to format your data model. So let's just say that I am trying to maybe write some notes, some helper notes for the user to be able to understand my calculations and maybe the tables that I have used in the calculations. What I can actually do is I can write some descriptions and some notes that the user can actually see while he's hovering his mouse on top of the calculations or while he's hovering his mouse on top of the tables. What do I do? I maybe want to select the measures table right here and in that I select the total sales measure. And in the properties panel, I have something called as description which is where I can write notes about that calculation some helper notes some things that the user would want to understand before he uses that calculation in the visual maybe I want to write this is units multiply by the price that's what I write and once you kind of commit to that that description is going to appear when the user hovers the mouse on top of this calculation now these kind of descriptions are also available to a particular calculation they are also available for the entire table so if I maybe want to write it on the sales table I can just click on the sales table and again I have a description here which is where I can write whatever description I want to write when the user hovers the mouse on top of the table itself maybe for now I'll just say apply changes for the sales calculation that I have done and if I go back to the model here and if I hover my mouse on top of the total sales measure I will see that description appearing right here which is units into price all right, another interesting trick is the ability to expand and collapse the table. This feature has been made available in the November 2020 Power BI update, and this allows you to expand and collapse the table and take a look at a lot of tables in the single view in the data modeling tab. Now, this is especially very helpful when you're trying to work with very large model with a lot of tables, perhaps 50 tables or 100 tables or maybe even more than that. What you can actually do is if you enable the new view of the data model, you'll be able to see this button, which is collapse and this button, which is expand to be able to kind of make the table smaller or make the tables larger to take a look at their exact columns. Now, what if, if you wanted to have all the tables collapsed at one single click. How do you do that? So you click on one of the tables and then you press control A and then you can click on collapse on any one of the table that is going to collapse all the tables in just one single go. Right. This way you can actually take a look at all the tables on the screen, move them around, manage them and create a data model that fits your need. All right, my final formatting trick is the ability to create multiple layouts in the data modeling tab itself. So most people end up working with all tables here. And even if they have 10 tables, 20 tables, 50 tables, they all kind of work in the single layout. If you're working with a very large model, it just gets clogged too much to be able to take a look at the screen, which has a lot of tables on the screen and multiple layers of relationship built up. Now, what you can actually do is you can create multiple layouts of the data model and just present your data model in a broken way, which kind of shows one set of calculations. So if I just maybe click on the new layout, I get a new layout here and I'm free to kind of rename that. And if I just go onto the fields here, I can drag the tables. Maybe I just drag the sales table. I drag the products table and I don't really have to build the relationship because the relationship has already been built in the all tables tab. This is just a layout that we are trying to create to manage the parts of the data model and not really take a look at the entire data model. And I can create as many tables right here. So maybe if I get customers, maybe if I get my calendar table, and this is, let's say one set of the data model that I'm trying to work with. Now, how would you get to know that how many data model layouts do you have? have to create. So generally the way that I have solved this problem is that I typically create one layout per fact table. So let's just say that if I'm trying to work with four or five fact tables and which have got relationships to the dimension tables, I will try to create three or four layouts, one layout per fact table and getting all the dimension tables for all the fact tables that I have it. This way I can manage my calculations in a more easier way and I can take a look at parts of the relationships at just one space. All right, those were my few tips on formatting your DAX, formatting your visuals, and formatting your data model. Let me know if you have any questions. And of course, if you have any tricks by which you format either of the three things, please put down your tricks in the comments and I'd love to take a look at them. Also, a side note about my DAX and my Power Query courses. If you're trying to learn any of these two skills, right from scratch, build up to a level where you start writing sophisticated queries or sophisticated DAX to be able to solve real-time business problems using Power BI, I highly recommend that you take a look at my course. It's going to be extremely beneficial. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.